Hi everyone, welcome back to Nurse Catherine here and welcome back to another educational style video. In today's video, I am going to be teaching you how to measure properly for a NG tube and placement of an NG tube. This is such an easy task, but many forget how to do this because you don't really place NG tubes too much in patients. I'm going to be using this mannequin behind me to show you all how you measure for this, but I will not be placing an NG tube in this mannequin as I don't believe this mannequin even has a stomach. <laughs> Before we get into the actual measurement of this NG tube, I want to discuss three scenarios in where you would place an NG tube and why NG tubes are even being placed in patients. The first reason being administration of nutrients and medications. I have seen this before in the emergency room. I have seen this before on med surge floors. So you really pretty much can get an NG tube anywhere you are working. Of course, if it's within your scope of practice and the scope of practice for your nursing floor. Secondly, another scenario where you may see an NG tube in your patient or may have to place an NG tube in your patient is when the patient needs bowel protection after a bowel surgery, or maybe they even need a bowel rest. And lastly, another area where you may see an NG tube is when liquids and fluids need to be removed from the stomach. You really will connect this NG tube to suction and you will see the contents of their stomach coming out of their nose, through the tube, of course, into the suction canister on the wall. And it sounds crazy, but yes, that happens. So finally, let's get into the measurement of the NG tube and how you do that and where to measure from. We are going to use the method that I learned in nursing school and that I was still doing in the hospital that I practiced at. So I am using a tape measure today, but you will be using an actual NG tube. I can't get my hands on one of those, but I can get my hand on a tape measure, which will work just fine because on your NG tube, you will have measurements just like a tape measure, which will help you determine how long your NG tube needs to be. So using the mannequin here, the technique that we always used was going from the nose, starting to measure at the nose, going to the ear lobe, and then going down to the xiphoid process on the chest. If you don't remember learning about the xiphoid process, it is the lowest point down at the bottom of the sternum. It's actually a point of cartilage, not bone. So bring your fingertips all the way down to the breastbone and the bottom of the sternum, and that piece of cartilage right down in there is the xiphoid process. Let's first measure the nose to the ear lobe because you always start at the tip of the nose and go to the bottom of the ear lobe, putting your marker one at the nose. So we have nose to ear lobe, that is six inches. Now let's move down to the xiphoid process. Now I'm continuing to keep that six inches at the bottom of the ear lobe. Then I'm going to go straight down to the xiphoid process, which measures out to be 29 and a half inches. And that is simply all you have to do to measure for an NG tube. That's what I was taught in nursing school, and that's what we were still practicing at the end of 2020, when I was still working in the emergency room, we were still practicing that technique. All right guys, other than that, that is it for today's video. That is how you measure an NG tube. Eventually we will get into placing an NG tube. But before you go, hit that subscribe button below this video and make sure to hit that notification bell to get notified when new videos are coming out weekly. All right, thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next video. Today I want to thank Code One Training Solutions. I'm here at the Atlanta office, but they have 22 offices up and down the East Coast from Maine to Florida, just like this, bigger training facilities and small rooms just like this where they have their beacon system, which is RQI and a live 
person watching you and helping you through your BLS and ACLS training. In the hospital that I used to work at, we used to do RQI training every quarter. Here with Code 1, you actually only have to do training every two years. This gives you a two-year BLS certification with the mix of RQI, a mix of somebody watching you here on the screen. For more information about Code 1 training solutions, you can pop down to the description and find links to their website, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn accounts. Again, thank you so much Code 1 Training Solutions for allowing me to use your space to create better and more in-depth content for my viewers.